Men lie. Women lie. Numbers don't. Numbers don't. Here's a go. Is your boy the goal? <laughs> is he the goal? So first off, let's just give a, a congrats to Djokovic. He was the only one missing. He's won everything you could win in tennis. All the Grand Slams, every single Grand Slam, US Open, Wimbledon, Australian Open, um, Roland Garros, he's won everything. But the only thing missing from that resume was an Olympic gold medal. And it matters. But I think people like to say that, oh no, like, because Federer's never won a gold medal. I don't think he's even won an Olympic medal, but I think he's not even won a gold medal. And people always, when they focus like on a tennis player's achievements, just focus on how many Grand Slams you have. And when you look at Grand Slams, the Olympics isn't counted in the, in the Grand Slam. But I'm sorry, it still counts. And if you really want to be even in that gold conversation or make it strong is, oh, I've won everything you can possibly win as a tennis player. So if you want to call yourself the GOAT and you've never won an Olympic gold, not silver or bronze, but you've never won an Olympic gold, I'm sorry, it's hard against your case. So Djokovic even had an amazing case to be the GOAT before the gold medal. But now he got a gold medal dub, it makes things very interesting and it almost makes it undisputable. But I think, look, Djokovic knows that he's, he's winding down. And we know why he's winding down because there's a new sheriff in town, like I remember the watching the Wimbledon when Federer beat my previous favorite player, which was Sampras. And then that was almost the change of the guard. Obviously, it took me a few years to really now say what's up, but that was a seminal moment in him beating the go to the time, which was Sampras. So I think for Alcaraz, the fact that I think he beat Djokovic twice pr previously shows that okay he's now going to be the next big thing so that is why it's even so much of a sweeter victory for Djokovic because when a guy has beaten you several times be before you're coming in as the underdog so credit to him for digging in deep knowing that this was maybe because because you have to think about this the Olympics is every four years Djokovic has been playing for a long time so if he had lost this was there any chance that he'd be back here in four years time like in LA, so there was actually so there was a, there was far more pressure on him in this game than Alcaraz. Alcaraz, you have your whole career ahead of you. He's going to be in at least three more Olympic games, at least th um, three, three more, at the very least. But for Djokovic, this could very well be his last. So with dealing with all that pressure of like this is your last chance to win the only trophy you've not won, huge, huge. Um, but the key thing though is, you see the the, the goats. Is Novak Djokovic is Novak Djokovic the GOAT? Um, because you have three names. It's Djokovic, it's Nadal, it's Federer. But one thing there's no doubt, my girl is the GOAT of women's tennis. Now, I used to watch during the days of Steffi Graf and Lindsay Davenport. You know, shout out to Billie Jean King, shout out to Steffi Graf, Lindsay Davenport, Serena transcended tennis. First of all, what she had to do with racial barriers, how she brought athleticism, how she brought dynamism, how she made the game faster. She just took the game to a whole new level. And I actually found it quite insulting how they were trying to make her and Maria Kraparova a rivalry. Bro, how can it be a rivalry when one player completely and totally lubricates the other player every single time? So Serena was just on a whole different level. I just wish that she had like the Grand Slam record by herself. But when people say who is the GOAT tennis player, oh, it's, it's Sir Serena, 100%. Even without the numbers, just how she played, how good she was, and how she just elevated the women's game. She was just on a whole different planet. And also, I'm sorry, it is good, Dodd and Doy to win a Grand Slam while being pregnant. So I think yeah, it was the Australian Open, which she won. And she was, I think, six or seven months pregnant. She was actually pregnant when she won that. So that just even adds to how she is the undisputed goat of women's tennis. But it's this this is where the debate lies. This is where the debate lies. Djokovic 
Nadal or Federer? I want to just, you know, I want to have, because there is an answer. Because as, because I was even asking questions, but I was like, no, 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 no. Once I saw this and I'll, I'll show it to you, I was like, okay, no, no, this is, it's not even up for debate. It is what it is now. It's not down to, to preference, but there is an objective answer. But let's build up over there. This was my previous goat, Sampras. Sampras was so bad. Bro, Sampras used to serve with the same speed on his second serve. And some of the shots this guy made, like the athleticism he had, how he moved around the courts, the kind of shots he was able to make, the guy was amazing to watch. Like, if you can, just go and watch some clips of Sampras. So Sampras was freaking insane. I'll be real with you. I respect Nadal. And one thing we have to accept is he's the greatest um, hard court player. Is it? I think, I think sorry, Clay. I think it's Clay. I think French Open is clear. Hold on. I think the French, uh, is this French Open hard or clay? I think it's clay. Yes, clay. Sorry, so it's clay. So, because 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 the US Open is hard court. So US Open is hard court. Bimbledon is grass. Yeah, it's clay. So he's the greatest clay court player of, of all time. So we look at his record at the French Open. I think he's... Oh, yeah, he's only like lost one final. Like he, every time he's been in it, he's made the final pretty much every time when he's been fully fit and only lost like one final, which I think was to Federer, I believe. But so yeah, he's the king of that court. But for of but I've never been a fan of Nadal because he's good, too aggressive, too physical, and there's not not enough beauty to his game. I just think his game isn't very graceful. It's effective, it's quality, but he was never a player that I enjoyed watching, let's say, as much as Sampras. Now, for me, for me, because obviously I saw Sampras, I saw Agassi, shout out to Ivanisevic, I sort of missed Boris Becker a bit, but for me, this is the best tennis player I've ever seen. In terms of skill, grace, beauty, elegance, him. It's like watching MJ play basketball. It's like watching Ronaldinho play football. It's like watching Muhammad Ali box. Where even if you don't even understand that there's a sport, the way he does do his backhand, the way he does do his forehand, and just just his body motion, just watching him. Basically, if you know nothing about football, you can appreciate the beauty when you see Ronaldinho play football. You can appreciate the beauty when you see Mohamed Ali box. You can appreciate the beauty when you see Roy Jones Jr. box. Or you can appreciate the beauty when you see um, Michael Jordan play basketball. Just watching Federer play was like, no, no, this is the best tennis player ever. Like, I thought Sampras was good. He just took the game to a whole new level. And it was like, this this, this is greatness here. Just on a quality level, this is, is greatness here. Um, but I, I enjoy Djokovic. You see, if I was to rate in terms of the three of like just prior preference, it would go... Federer, Djokovic, Nadal, based on preference. Because I like Djokovic because he's very all-round. And I just like how he's like a very balanced player where he can switch up. He can go aggressive. He can go return. So he is just a very well-rounded player. So he's a good bat. I think Federer is really much more graceful and good, good to watch. Nadal is a lot more aggressive. He's a lot more balanced. So I just like how he's a, he's a very well-rounded player and can switch styles anytime he, he wants. But... So he's probably, out of the three, I say, so Federer, Djokovic, then thinking, but this is not about me. We're here for the objective answer. So like, who out of this three is the GOAT? Who is the GOAT? Because we're here to be objective. We're not here for, again, I've given you my preference, which is Federer. That's my preference. But who is the greatest tennis player of all time? Guys, there's an answer. There is an answer. Let's check check this out. Let's just expand just a little bit. Um, hold up. There we go. All right. Cool. So, Djokovic has 24 Grand Slams. Nadal has 22. Federer, 20. Um, so, Djokovic now finally has a medal. Federer doesn't even have a single medal. Nadal has one medal. It's gold, but only one me me medal. Djokovic has a gold medal. Three bronze. Is that two bronze or three bronze? So he's actually got more medals than both Nadal and, and Federer, and including a gold medal. 
Weeks at number one, Nadal 209, Federer 310, Djokovic 428. Year end number one, five, Federer, five for Na, Nadal, eight for Djokovic. Big time stones, 54 Federer, 59 Nadal, 72 Djokovic. Overall titles, aha, so Federer obviously has more there, 103, 92, 93. So that's one that's, okay, Federer wins. But that's what's that. Top 10 victories, 224 for Federer, 186 for Nadal, 238. You see, the thing, before we go there, so overall tie titles. Now, those titles that Federer won, what were those titles? Was that the fruit selling open? Was that the backyard open? Was that the brick open? So you could just play in some backyard that's, well, you know, okay, fine, you won that. So what, what the hell is that, is that title? The titles that matter are the ones where it's a top place competing and everyone competes. You could just play like, oh, yeah, I'm playing in this fruit selling open. Do you want to come? No, I don't want to play in the freaking fruit selling open. I want to play in the freaking Wimbledon US Open or Australian Open. Keep your fruit sellers to yourself. All right. Now, this is a slam dunk. Head to head. As I say in muscle combat, he wins. Flawless victory. Djokovic against Federer. Djokovic wins 27 to 23. Djokovic against Nadal. Djokovic wins 31 to 2029. Now, people can say, well, Nadal is older, Federer is older. What would they be at their peak? But here's the thing, guys. Men lie. Women lie. Heck, cats, dogs, rats, ants. Eagles lie. Men lie. Women lie. Numbers don't. Numbers do. He's the GOAT. He's the GOAT. I mean, the, the numbers prove it. <laughs> because he has the most grand slams. He's been number one for the longest period of time. And head to head against his contemporaries, he's got a better head to head record. So you can say that, oh, could Pig Djokovic beat Nadal and Ferrari at his peak? Who knows? I don't know the answer to that question. But what I do know is this is irrefutable evidence that Novak Djokovic is the greatest tennis player of all time. Most Grand Slams has won everything you can win as a tennis player. He spends the most weeks at num number one. And against his contemporaries, he said what's up. And he's also won the most big tie titles. So we don't care about any football. Big titles, the titles that matter, he's won the most. And he has a better head-to-head -head record than both Nadal and, and Federer. So once I saw this, oh, it's done. It's done. So now what we now say is who do you prefer? Like for me, I still feel Federer is the best tennis player I've ever seen. It's like how some people say, oh, Pele is the GOAT, Messi is the GOAT, fine. So if you want to say, you, you can have that. My GOAT is r &I. And my objective goes to people might argue maybe Maradona, based on what he did in 86. Now, basketball is, is different. <laughs> it's basketball is different. I think it's in unison that the goat of basketball is Michael Jordan. So that's irrefutable. I don't, I don't think that's kind of... You see, football, there's an argument. There are people that say it's Messi. People say it's Pele. People will argue Maradona. There's a dispute. There's no dispute in basketball. Boxing is tricky. Muhammad Ali is not really the goat based on him as a boxer. Muhammad Ali is the GOAT because he is the greatest sports person ever because he transcended sports. And he showed what a sports person could do in terms of him not going to the Vietnam War, fighting for civil, civil rights. So he was more than a sports person. Because again, the boxing GOAT, some people may, would say um, Sugar Ray Roy Robinson. Some people would say Floyd Mayweather. Some people would say that before he got screwed over by that decision, Roy Jones Jr. So there are many... People that would say very different questions. So I think the only sports I can think of where it's undisputable is basketball with Michael George Jordan. That's the only sport I can think of where there no one will, no one no one even argues. That's all. MJ. Djokovic might be it. Because how can you dispute? <laughs> how can you actually dispute when you just look at what he's done in the sport? 
How can you disagree? Because if you say Federer, it's because you just prefer him as a player. If you say Djokovic, it's because you prefer him as, as, a, as a player. And let's keep it a stack. These are the, 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 these are the three greatest tennis players of all time. Shout out to Sampras, shout out to Agassi, shout out to Boris Becker, shout out to all those guys. I'm sorry. When we talk about who are the greatest tennis players that we've, that's the game has ever seen, it's Djokovic, Nadal, and Federer. This is the only combo we have in terms of the goats of tennis, with all due respect to all the guys that came before. So the only thing you're going to hold against Djokovic is, because let's be real, some of, forget tennis, some of the, the best sports matches I've ever seen in my life were those Fed Red Nadal matches where they were both at their peak. That was peak sports. I've never seen a more compelling, amazing display of athleticism and just sporting brilliance than those Fed Red Nadal matches. And I was having a argument with some guys who said that, oh, like, you know, you should put um, for, football players in the same category as these guys. I love, I love R9. Messi is amazing. I don't know, boom. A football player as an individual cannot match up to what tennis players do. What Federer and Nadal were doing for four hours, nearly five hours, the level of concentration, endurance, and technical skill you have to have to play for that long at that level, there is no football player that can even come close to compete. So please, rest, I know I love football. That's my sport and my favorite sports. Don't compare football players to what the very best tennis players do at the very highest level of the sport. No. There's no comparison. As an individual, on an individual athletic level, football players cannot even begin to compete with what tennis players do. Um, so the question is, could Djokovic beat Federer and Nadal at their peak? I don't know. I'm sorry. You can't say, oh, he could never do it. How do you know? So all we have to do is just go with what we have now, which is that the data shows and the numbers shows that he's the greatest tennis player of all time. That he is. And he has existed with the two other players who are closest to hold that goat crown. And against those two greatest, he has a better head-to-head -head than them. So from the data we have, Novak Djokovic is the greatest tennis player of all time. And that Olympic gold medal was just the chair on top. Without that, you could even still make the argument, but with that... What more do you want him to, to do? What more do you want this guy to do? <laughs> he has simply said, what's up? He literally has said, what's up? And has done everything asked of him. Because I'm sorry, like, 24 Grand Slams, weeks number four for 28, eight, 72 big, big titles, 258 top 10 victories. Come on, bro, like, it's the, the numbers are too strong. The numbers are too strong. The numbers are way too strong. So, again, Federer is my guy. And Federer will always be my guy. He'll, he'll always be my guy in terms of the best tennis player I've seen. Serena will always be my girl. Best female tennis player that I've seen. But if we're being objective, if we're being objective and keeping it a stack, Djokovic is the GOAT. And we, if we're being objective, Novak Djokovic, or uh, Novak Olushegu, Babangida, Babayaro, Djokovic is the GOAT of tennis.